Hello everyone. This is the continuation of our discussion last time about scientific revolution. So if you can remember, we've discussed at least three scientists or pioneers of scientific revolution. The first was Nicholas Copernicus. Okay, his theory is about the heliocentric world or the the sun is at the center and uh, he he contradicted to the old belief that it was the earth which was at the center and he faced persecution because of that the next scientist we've discussed last time is mr charles darwin so his book a very influential one the title is origin of species it triggered controversy in the world of religion and up to this time his theory is accepted by many and refuted by some because it's so debatable topic it's still a theory up to this time so that's it those are the two scientists and the third one i've discussed is mr sigmund freud an Austrian psychoanalyst. Okay, he's the founder of a school of thought called psychoanalysis. Okay. So last time I've discussed about Oedipus and Electra complex. So as a br brief review, um, the the term Oedipus was taken from a Greek tragedy. It's a story about a prince who killed his father and the, uh, he developed in sexual intimacy or sexual relationship with his own mother unknowingly it's the fault of a sorcerer because accordingly um, the the son of the king will destroy the entire kingdom so the king got nervous he immediately um, decided to throw the, the child away so he was adopted by the enemy kingdom so that's it that's the story all about about prince oedipus so this is an abnormality in uh, in affection or sexual affection because when we talk of oedipus complex it's the son who develops a sexual affection towards her uh, his mother which is considered by us as taboo and it's abnormal in psychology okay that's oedipus complex electra complex on the other hand is a sexual affection between the daughter towards her father so the parents here are innocent in this case this is only one-sided this is only between the son or the children's affection to their parents on, and on this part that's the daughter's affection sexual affection towards her father so that's electra complex this one is oedipus complex so that's for the review of what we have discussed last time and in this session we will talk about sigmund freud's psychosexual theory psychosexual theory he said that uh, who you are right now is actually the shadow of all your sexual experiences when you are just young so everything in which uh, develop unto you when you are young uh, you are now the result of um, years and years of exposure or years and years of experience either environmental mental or whatsoever so let's start now how does personality develop according to the famous psychoanalyst sigmund freud children who go through a series of psychosexual stages that lead to the development of the adult personality um he said that 
this theory, psychoanalysis, describe how personality develops over the course of childhood. While Freud's theory of personality development is well known in psychology, it has always been quite controversial because it speaks about the, the evil side and the taboo side of society. So both during Freud's time and in modern psychology, his theory is still considered controversial because um, we avoid to discuss such sensitive mat matter. So for Freud, he is very, very subjective. He, he does not care um, whatever we throw unto him. So anyway, one important thing to note is that contemporary psychoanalytic theories of personality development have incorporated and emphasized ideas about internalized relationships and interactions in the complex ways which we maintain our sense of self into the models that we began with Sigmund Freud. So Freud believed that personality developed through a series of childhood stages in which the pleasure, pleasure means this is the the desire, the innate instinct within you, such as seeking energies of the what we call id, id, id is pronounced as id. It be, it become the focus on certain certain erogenous areas, an erogenous area zone or erogenous zone is characterized as an area of the body that is particularly sensitive to stimulation so during the five sexual stages which are the oral anal phallic latent and genital stages the erogenous zone associated with each stages serves as a source of pleasure so psychosexual energy it's also known by many as libido and it was described as the driving force behind our behavior. So psychoanalytic theory suggested that personality is mostly established by the age of five. So our personality is developed uh, slowly, approximately at the age of five. Uh, early experiences play a large role in personality development and continue to influence behavior in later life each stage uh, one two three four five stages each stage of development is marked by conflicts that can help build growth or stuffle depending upon how they are resolved so if these psychological psychosexual stages are completed successfully a healthy personality is the result so if a certain issues are not resolved at the appropriate stage, fixations can occur. Okay, what is a fixation? It is a persistent focus on an earlier psychosexual stage until this conflict is resolved and the individual will remain stuck in this stage and a person who is fixated at the oral stage for example may be over dependent on others and may seek oral stimulation through smoking drinking or eating so we have to pass or succeed in each stages properly so that we will have a well mold personality at the later stage now let's talk about the oral stage this is from age one uh, from zero to 12 months 12 months is one year old okay from zero to 12 months during the oral stage the infant's primary source of interaction occurs through the mouth so the rooting and sucking reflex is especially important the mouth is the vital for eating and the infant derives pleasure from oral stimulation through gratifying activities such as tasting and sucking because the infant is entirely dependent upon caretakers 
Okay, actually the caretakers are the one responsible for feeding the child. The child also develops a sense of trust and comfort through this oral stimulation. The primary conflict at this stage is the weaning process. Weaning, when I say weaning, that's W-E-A-N-I-G. N-I-N-G, weaning process. So the child must become less dependent upon caretakers. If fixation occurs at this stage, when I say fixation, it means um, there is a problem at this stage. You are going to go back to, to a stage wherein um, you, you miss the part. For example, you're already an adult. Though you will possess or manifest a childlike behavior because you you miss such level so if fixation occur at this stage according to freud he, he believed that the individual individual would have issues with dependency or aggression so oral fixation can result in problems with drinking eating smoking or nail biting so you try to assess yourself if you are having a problem like this okay so as what i've said if ever you've missed the part you will develop some fixation so these are problems that occurs in later life let's proceed to the second stage okay second stage is the anal stage anal stage so the child's pleasure focuses on anus and from elimination so during the anal stage freud believed that the primary focus of libido you know what's libido this is the sexual drive uh, libido was on controlling bladder and bowel movements the major conflict at this stage is toilet training the child has to learn to control their bodily needs. Okay, dili, maski asa lang malibang. Dapat, eh, he must control his bodily needs. It, okay, if everything is ready, then that's it. So, developing this control leads to a sense of accomplishments and dependence. According to Freud, success at this stage is dependent upon the way which parents approach toilet training. Parents who utilize praise and rewards for using the toilet at the appropriate time encourage positive outcome and helps feel capable and productive. So Freud believed that positive experiences during the toilet training stage, it serves as the basis for people to become competent, productive, creative, and successful adults. So however, not all parents provide the support and encouragement that children need uh, during this stage. Some parents punish, ridicule, or shame a child for accidents. So according to Freud, inappropriate parental responses can result in negative, okay, negative outcomes if parents take an approach that is too lenient. Freud suggests that anal expulsive personality could develop in which the individual uh, uh, becomes messy, wasteful, or destructive personality. So, I, what I mean in Bisaya ba, pag wala mo matarong og toilet training, katong bata pa mo, there is a tendency that you will become damak or messy wasteful and at the same time you will have a destructive personality so it will hunt our adult life really if we don't uh, we, we are not properly trained during the most critical years of our life that's one to three years old so if parents are too strict or begin toilet tra training too early Freud believed that anal retentive personality develops in which the individual is stringent, orderly, rigid, and obsessive. So if you are trained as early as b before 1 to 3 years old about toilet training, 
as what I've said, you'll become organized and very, very orderly in everything that you do. Okay, that's the advantage of anal stage, um, proper handling of anal stage. So let's proceed to the third stage. <clears throat> that's from three to six years old. It's called phallic stage. So child's pleasure focuses on genitals. Okay. Oedipus for boys and Electra for girls. Okay, if you can still recall our discussion last time, at this age, 3 to 6 years old, those abnormalities in sexual affection develops. So, Freud suggested that during the phallic stage, the primary focus of libido is on the genitals. When I say genitals, that's your vagina and for the males, the penis. At this age, 3 to 6 years old, children also begin to discover the differences between males and females. Freud also believed that boys begin to view their fathers as a rival for their mother's affection. So the Oedipus complex describes this feeling of wanting to possess the mother and the desire to replace the father. However, the child also fears that he will be punished by the father for these feelings. So ang tawag dyan, castration anxiety. Okay? Magkakaroon siya ng fear towards his father because of his feeling uh, sa iyahang mother. So, Remember the term castration anxiety. Sa girls, <clears throat> I made mention about Electra complex. Uh, the term has been used to describe a sim similar set of feelings experienced by young girls. Freud, however, believed that girls instead experience penis envy. So, dyan din sa part na yun, develop yung bakla tomboy. Okay? Penis or vaginal envy. Okay, psychologists such as Karen Horney, a weird pa talagang name, disputed this theory, calling it both inaccurate and demeaning to women. Instead, Horney proposed that men experience feelings of inferiority because they cannot give birth to children, a concept she referred to as womb envy. Okay? So, very controversial. May, may kumontra pa sa phallic stage. Now, let's proceed to the fourth stage. That's from 7 to 11 years old. It's called the latency stage. Okay, at this stage, the child represses sexual interest and develops social and intellectual skills. Okay. So, during this stage... The superego, okay, we will discuss later what is superego. The superego continues to develop while the id's energy are suppressed. So, children develop social skills, values, and relationship with peers uh, outside the family. The development of ego and superego contributes to this period of calm. The stage begins around the time that children in, enter into school and become more concerned with peer relationships, hobbies, and other interests. So the latent period is a time of exploration which the sexual energy is repressed or dormant. This energy is still present but it is sublimated into other areas such as intellectual pursuits and social interactions this stage is important in the development of social communication skills and self-confidence so as with other psychosexual stages freud believed that it was possible for children to become fixated or stuck in this stage Fixation at this stage can result in immaturity and inability to form fulfilling relationships as an adult. Immaturity ha, ang consequence if ever your latency stage is being hindered. So let's proceed to the fifth part. 
the onset of puberty causes the libido to become active once again. So, natutulog siya sa latency stage, pero after 11 years old onwards, your libido will become active. So, during this final stage, um, the individual develops a strong sexual interest in the opposite sex. This stage begins during puberty but lasts throughout the rest of a person's life. Where in earlier stages, the focus was solely on individual's needs. Interest in the welfare of others it grows during this stage. The goal of this stage is to establish a balance between the various life areas. So unlike many other stages of development, as what I mentioned, Freud believed that the ego and the superego were fully formed and functioning at this point. Meaning, um, you, you are already considered as matured at this point. Okay? Ego and superego is actually the enemy of the id. The id is the animal part in you. So, <clears throat> younger children are ruled by the id. Id means your desires, your selfishness, whatsoever. So, id demands immediate satisfaction of the most basic needs and wants. Teens, in the genital stage of development, are able to balance their most basic urges against the need. This is to conform to the demand of reality and social norms. So, that's it for the last stage of sexual development. Okay, now let's proceed to the second part of our discussion. Actually, this is the byproduct of the psychosexual development. Okay? So, it's the id, ego, and the superego. So, according to Sigmund Freud, human personality is complex and has more than a single component. So, in his famous psychoanalytic theory, Freud states that personality is composed of three elements known as the id, the ego and the super ego these elements work together to create complex human behavior so each component add its own unique contribution to personality and the three interact in ways that have a powerful influence on the individual each element of personality emerges at different points in life so Here's a closer look of these key parts of personality, this one. How they work individually and how they interact. So if you will look at it, uh, your id is the one who keeps on demanding and your ego there at the middle, color purple or violet, it's the, it serves as the judge. And your superego is is the good side of you who keeps on telling you what's the proper and not okay so the id let's talk about the id this one the evil one according to freud the id is the source of all psychic energy uh, making it primary component of personality and the id is the only component of personality that is present from birth. This aspect of personality is entirely unconscious and includes instinctive and primitive behavior. The id is driven by the pleasure principle, which strives for immediate gratification of all desires, wants, and needs. If these needs are satisfied immediately, the result is a state anxiety or tension. So, for example, an increase in hunger or thirst. This should produce an immediate attempt to eat or drink. The id is very important in early life because it ensures the infant's needs or the infant's needs are met. If the infant is hungry or uncomfortable, 
they will cry until the demand of the id is satisfied. So young infants, if you can still remember your your cousin or your your sibling, mga infants, mga bata, they are ruled entirely by the id. There is no reasoning with them if mapansin ninyo when this needs demand satisfaction. So imagine trying to convince a baby to wait until lunchtime to eat uh, sa meal nila. Observe, <laughs> will they obey you or not? So the id requires immediate satisfaction and because the other components of personality are not yet present, wala pa si ego and super ego, the infant will cry until these needs are fulfilled. Okay, gets nyo? However, immediately fulfilling these needs is not always realistic or even possible. So, if we were ruled entirely by the pre pleasure principle, we might find ourselves grabbing the things that we want out of other people's hand to satisfy our own craving. So, nagiging... Tawag dyan, spoiled ang bata and what you want, what you get. This behavior would be both disruptive and socially unacceptable. So, according to Freud, the id tries to resolve the tension created by the pleasure principle through the use of primary process thinking. Primary process thinking involves forming a mental image of the desired object as a way of satisfying the need so that's the id it's the evil part of you and it's the most primitive and they are at the subconscious level meaning i'm sorry unconscious level you are not conscious about it because it's already implanted unto you okay sa mga bata usually ma-observe yan now let's proceed to the second one ito si ego okay this is the most realistic part of you. Let's talk about the ego. So, Freud, Freud again said that the ego develops from the id. Galing siya dito. And it ensures that the impulses of the id can be expressed in a manner acceptable to the world. Okay? The ego functions in the conscious, pre-conscious, and the unconscious mind. Kakaiba si ego. Nandun siya sa gitna. The ego is the component of personality that is responsible for dealing with reality. Okay? Ang ego kasi, it operates based on the reality principle. Masyado siyang practical. Uh, gusto siyang mag to satisfy the id's desire in realistic and socially appropriate ways. The reality principle, uh, it weighs the cause and benefits of an action before deciding to act upon or abandon impulses. Like in many cases, the id's impulses can be satisfied through a process or called delayed gratification. So ano tong delayed gratification? Ano siya? The ego will eventually allow the behavior but only in appropriate time and place. Okay, papayagan niya si id pero i-balance mo na if it is appropriate or not. Uh, Freud, si Sigmund Freud, kinumpare niya si id sa horse. Okay? And then si ego naman sa horse rider. Isipin niyo na lang yung kabayo pati yung nagda-drive sa kabayo. So the horse provides the power and motion while the rider provides direction and guidance. So without its rider, the horse may simply wander wherever it wish and do whatever it please. So the rider gives the horse direction and commands to get it uh, where to go and the rider wants it to go. So the ego also discharges tension created by unmet impulse. Okay, ano tong unmet impulse? Galing to siya sa secondary thinking. In which, the ego tries to find an object in the real world that matches the mental image created by the id's primary process. So, imagine, if you try to imagine that you are stuck in a long meeting at work, you find yourself growing increasingly hungry at the meeting 
And then, while the id might compel you to jump up from your seat and rush to the break. Uh, have you tried this one? You're so hungry and then you want to take your break? Si ego will guide you to sit quietly and wait for the meeting to end. <laughs> Instead of acting upon the primary urges of the id, you spend the rest of the meeting imagining yourself eating a cheeseburger. It can even happen to you. For example, you want to urinate and the meeting is still there and nakakahiya masyado lumabas, di ba? Your, your ego will tell you sit down and wait until it it's over. So once the meeting is finally over, you can seek out the object where imagining and... <clears throat> Yung demand mo na masatisfy si id in a realistic and appropriate manner. So, that is ego. Okay? So realistic. Okay, siya yung nagbabalance. Now, how about, how about the other one? <clears throat> the super ego. Okay, this is, this one, this one, the angel. This is the last component of personality. And according to Freud, this one begins uh, at the at the age of five. The super ego holds the internalized moral standards and ideals that we acquire from our parents and society. For example, um, the the good morals that they impart upon us, or the teachings of the church, <clears throat> teaching from school. So the super ego provides you guidelines for making judgments. It's similar to conscience. Diba? The conscience includes information about that are viewed as bad by parents and bad by society. These behaviors are often forbidden and lead to bad consequences, uh, punishments, or feelings of guilt and remorse. If ever, you will try to contradict with your conscience. So the Ego ideal, get the term, this includes the rule and standards for behavior that the ego inspires to. So the super ego, let's go back, <clears throat> it tries to perfect ourselves and to make us civilize. Okay? It, it attempts to become holy. Okay, it works to suppress all unacceptable urges of the id and struggles to make the ego act upon idealistic standards rather than upon realistic principles. So the super ego is present in the conscious, preconscious, and the unconscious part of our mind. So it is developed late kasi mas maaga si id but this will govern your mind to do what is proper, what is just, and what is moral. This one naman, si ego, is the referee. Kasi it's not always moral. If ma... Kung isipin ninyo, hindi naman palagi mabait. Pagbibigyan niya minsan si id sa kanyang gusto. Si ego, pagbibigyan niya minsan si super ego. Nobody is perfect, ika nga. Because your ego will serve as the mediator between the um, demands of your id and the advice of your super ego. I'll give you an example wherein your id is being gratified or satisfied rather than super ego. For example, um, you, you are planning to have a diet. And then, at the same time, with that diet, you have to do exercise <clears throat> at least 30 minutes a day. And then, after five days of doing such diet, you get tired and someone invited you for a free meal. O, diba? Sabi ni Aid, kunin mo yung pagkain, libre naman, gutom ka na. And at the same time, um... Ang sarap ng pagkain. Si Super Ego said, No, do not do that. You have to stick with your principle. Anyway, um, you have to be committed for you to get your goal. Okay? Do what is right. Super Ego will now enter, I don't know, Ego will now enter the scene. Okay? Sasabi ni Ego, Time up. Time muna. So, ibabalance niya. 
pagbibigyan niya si Eid somehow. Di ba nangyari yan sa inyo? Kakain na lang kayo, pero konti lang. But you have to break your diet, kakain kayo, and then instead of 30 minutes exercise, sabi mo sarili mo, 20 minutes na lang. So if it happens, it means ego is now giving way for Eid. Di ba? In some other ways. Kasi hindi naman palagi perfect. So that ends my discussion about Freud's um, psychosexual theory and even his theory about our morality. So if you have some questions, um, you can post it on the comment below. Okay, thank you and so sorry for the unnecessary noise because I am doing this video in our house. Kasi sa school medyo maingay. So, thank you and have a good day.